Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome to Satisfactory, where today I'm making a starter guide for new players and also for people that want to start a new world. And considering I have well over a thousand hours in this game, trust me when I say this starter guide will help you out a lot, and so will the tips near the end of the video. So stick around and remember to leave a like. Anyway though, we're going to be starting in the Green Hills biome since most new players like to start here because it's so friendly looking and pretty. But don't worry, the guide and the tips I include in this video will be applicable to any starting location. And if you want to try a different starting location, I'd highly recommend checking out my starting locations guide. And it kind of gives the pros and cons of every place. But anyway, let's get started here. And I'm going to give you the best starting tip there possibly is once you've built your hub. And that is do not, I repeat, do not get addicted to the craft bench. Don't do it. Oh. You need a couple iron plates? You need some iron rods? Oh, I only need a few iron ingots? Let me just craft, I don't know, 100, 200, 300. Don't do this. You'll really just make the game drag on for yourself. So you're gonna wanna automate as soon as possible. Even if that's just like putting down some portable miners to get the ore for you, or set up a handful of smelters just to get that first little bit of smelting done. Just automate as soon as you can. Scaling in this game is everything. Because once you get one portable miner, it's pretty easy to make even more. Then you get your first constructor set up and boom! You'll wonder why you did any handcrafting at all. And as you're automating things, try and automate as much as possible. Like get your concrete automated, get wires going, cables, plates, etc. And even biomass. Because in the early stage of the game, you're gonna be running off of freaking leaf power, man. And it's not super efficient, so you're gonna have to run around a lot and gather up lots and lots of fuel to power all of your new automations. So once you have things like set up, it's time to look into the MAM. Because this allows you to unlock far, far more stuff. So when you pick up random things, you unlock things to research, like alien organisms. If you killed like a shellback thing, you'll have stuff to unlock in a tree here. Flower petals, same deal, power slugs, Etc. Etc. all the way down here. So run around, collect your leaves, enjoy the world, try and collect as many different things as you possibly can, so you trigger this like a research to start, and then try to collect a lot of sluggo boys too, because they'll be coming in handy later in the game. And also there are mineral deposits out and about, so if you see something weird, collect a bit, and I'll trigger new research as well. And after a little bit of researching and adventuring, soon you'll have enough materials to make the space elevator. And this is gonna be the main project for the rest of the game. So you put that bad boy down, and from the dirt sprouts the greatest creation in the game. A massive anchor that attaches to an elevator that comes down from space. Like, oh my goodness. The scale of it is, like, insane. You be messing in the dirt, and then you get this. It's just this beast landing next to you wherever you really want it. And that's when the fun begins. Because now you have to start to automate space elevator parts, if you didn't have everything unlocked, so that you can get new tech tiers. And you just automate those the same way you automated everything else. But everything gets perpetually more spicy. The main thing about unlocking the space elevator though, and the most important thing, is to get off of freaking leaf power. You can't take over a world if you're running around collecting leaves all the time. You have to automate power. And to automate power, you are going to have to get coal power. And power is kind of like the main thing you progress through. So you start with gathering leaves, you get to coal, you automate fuel to nuclear, and then geothermal generators as well. They're kind of just an extra thing. Coal though is definitely the biggest milestone because again, you're finally free from the leaves. You can wander around, do things, and always keep making power. But more importantly than that, you can scale so much faster. Because the more coal you get, the more power you get. The more power you get, the more machines you get. The more machines you get, the more everything you get. So really, when I'm starting off a game, this is like my main goal. Get coal, that's it. So yeah, coal generators are extremely important. And I could show you a real quick and simple design here if you're just starting out. So, it uses eight coal generators and three water extractors and a few pumps. 
So it's a little weird, but I'll explain it to you. So pretty much every coal generator takes about 15 coal per minute and 45 water per minute. So if you build eight coal generators, that'll take up 360 water. And since every water extractor can produce 120 water per minute, three times 120 is 360 there. So that's all the water you need, and then you just need 120 coal. The hardest thing to do with this setup though, is you're gonna have to split the middle water extractor between the two pipes. So, you have it go out, you have a pump going in this direction, a pump going in that direction, that forces the water into this pipe, and that means each of the pipes here will have 180 water in it. Because the full 360 from all three water extractors won't fit in one pipe. But then with both sources of 180 water, they go into four coal generators, and 45 times four is 180. And then you just do that on the other side as well. And look at that, then you have 600 megawatts of automated power. And then the age of biomass burners is over. And this is when the game really opens up. Your next big goal is fuel generators, and once you have fuel generators, you get nuclear and yeah. So you can play however you want, do whatever you want, and just have fun. And so at this point, we're gonna try and dive a little bit more in the tips section of the video. And number one is handling the mess. Because once you get coal power, you probably have a pretty sprawling factory already. And if you started getting into assemblers, well, your base has probably started to spaghetti a bit. Just a little bit. And unfortunately, as you move forward here, you have to be more and more organized because you need to produce more and more things. You need to be able to find where items are and just keep track of things. Because your only limit really now is your resources. And some things like coal and quartz can be really, 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 really far away. And you're gonna just have to set up a ton of trucks and trains and all that jazz to get it back to base. So you want to utilize it really well. So consider optimizing things, or you can go with a strat that I recently did, wherein I just let the spaghetti flow in a bit of a more organized approach. But instead of cleaning this whole thing up and rebuilding your whole factory, just build another one. So you just leave this one running, and you start building a more organized one, like five feet away. So you just build a nice little box with a few floors in between. Kind of think about how many resources you're bringing in and how many smelters and furnaces and constructors you can run. Build your more organized and efficient designs. And then there you go, you have a basically organized factory. And also you can just expand to get resources from other areas too. So then you can have your organized factory running at the same time as your spaghetti, and then you got items for days for your next big project. But yeah, this is a strategy I employed in my latest playthrough of the game, which you can watch on my channel if you subscribe. But I took this a step further, and I went from the spaghetti mess to the less spaghetti mess, and then I started making a giant mega base, because I just made a bunch of these basically organized factories until the Mark II miners were unlocked, and then also I went to expanded power infrastructure, where you get the fuel generators and the Mark IV belts. And the fuel generators and the Mark IV belts kind of take you into the very late game, where you're setting up your train infrastructure, going across the map, getting jetpacks, and then getting into tier seven spicy hyper spice stuff. But also keep in mind, I have like a thousand hours in the game and I already did my like first playthrough and stuff. So if it's your first playthrough, maybe don't do that and just enjoy the game at your pace. Oh man, but if it is your first playthrough, do your future self a favor and build yourself some kind of storage room where you have all the items you're processing going into bins because you're gonna be needing them, brother. You're gonna be needing them all. And running around busy factory floors or through insane spaghetti madness is gonna drive you nuts. So just peel off a few resources for yourself in a nice organized manner and it'll make the playthrough much more enjoyable. Switching gears though, I have two more incredibly important tips for you. So remember those uh, sluggo boys we're collecting earlier? Well you turn them into power shards and then 100% of the time you want to use those power shards in your extracting machines. Always make sure to overclock it as much as your belts can handle. And then the final thing I just want to mention is that during this mid-game process, around when you get coal, you should really consider exploring the world more, seeing what other resources are out there, and also looking for these bad boys. These are crash drop pods, each of which has a lot of spicy items around, so you can kind of get a little heads up about what's happening later in the game. And also, inside the drop pods, once you unlock them, 
you can get one of the most valuable items in the game. A hard drive. And these bad boys are a godsend. Data on the hard drive has been salvaged and can be repurposed to unlock an alternate recipe. Salvaging more hard drives will provide additional alternate recipes. Couldn't have said it better myself, Ada. Yes, you get alternate recipes when you research the hard drives in the MAM. So just in the top here, you throw them in, you hit scan, they take about 10 minutes, and then once it's unlocked, you get to choose between three different re alternate recipes and go from there. And there are almost a hundred alternate recipes, each of which drastically change the game. Like making steel screws instead of screws out of iron, or making wire out of iron instead of copper, and so, 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 so much more. And not only do alternate recipes give you more options to produce things, they are also pretty much universally better, aside from a few niche scenarios. So generally speaking, when you can, use alternates. They'll help you out a ton. And that is pretty much all I have for you today. So if you're an older player and you want to give some newbies some tips, leave them down in the comments below. Or if you're a new player and you want to ask me a few questions, again, just ask me in the comments. I'm happy to have a little discussion with you. But for now, I really hope this video helped you out, and if it did, please remember to leave a like, and subscribe for more satisfactory content. But anyway, have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye <laughs>